Good morning, world. Today I go in for one of my treatments, and so I figured it would be a good day to talk about some of the treatments I've already received. Specifically, I want to talk about my radiation treatment that I've received today. Um, so, again, I am not a doctor. I have a very rudimentary understanding of exactly how radiation works. So if you want more information on that, you're kind of in the wrong place. I'm just going to talk about my personal experiences with it. But you can always Google it. There is a ton of information out there. And um, one piece of advice, though, if you do look it up, is know that not all of that is going to pertain to you, the information that you find. Um, an example of that is when I, when I got to the Mayo Clinic, they gave me a book about radiation and the process and how it was going to work. And one of the things in the book that they talk about is needing to hold your breath and now I'm assuming that that's if you're receiving treatment you know like in your torso area and so you need to be able to hold your breath so you don't move during treatment because that's a big part of it um but I immediately was like oh my gosh I'm I am going to need to hold my breath during treatment and I'm not very good at holding my breath I've never been a strong swimmer so I was super worried about it and then I get in there and they're like we're treating your head. You're not going to need to hold your breath. And so I was worrying about it for nothing. So when you're reading information about radiation treatment, know that not all of it's probably going to pertain to you or you're not going to experience all of that. Um, the other thing that you might find when you're looking up information on radiation is this new type of radiation called proton beam. Now I have another little side story about that. I did not receive the proton radiation. I received traditional radiation. Now in that first initial meeting with my radiation oncologist, they said basically they talked about the proton beam radiation and told me that that wasn't an option. And when I asked why it wasn't an option, they said that the proton radiation is for people who have more time. So immediately, I thought that they meant more time to live. And I know that sounds terrible, but I was thinking like, okay, there's this new, better proton thing, and, and they're only giving it to the people who have good chances of surviving, and, and I apparently don't have enough time. Well, what they actually meant was that I didn't have enough time to get the proton set up because apparently it takes like a certain amount of time, a couple weeks or something to get all the imaging and I don't know, it's really complicated. And so it takes a lot of time to get set up and I needed to start my treatments as soon as possible because my tumor is aggressive. They needed to, I didn't have enough time to wait to start treatment was what they meant. But I didn't understand that. And I thought that they meant had more time as in people who had more time to live. And so after that initial meeting with the radiation oncologist, I was devastated. I thought I was like, they don't even think that they can help me. They don't even believe that I have enough time to be worthy of this new treatment thing. And I want, you know, the best treatment I can get. And why won't they do it? And I was just devastated. And we went back to um, the Airbnb that my mom and I were staying in. And I mean, I'm just, I'm crying and I'm talking to my mom and I'm like, you know, I'm just devastated. And so my mom, being the advocate that she is, she was like, nope. So she calls my radiation oncologist and she's like, okay, I need a better explanation of why she can't get this new therapy treatment. And that was when they explained to her that I didn't have enough time to wait to start treatment, not that I didn't have enough time to live. And so my point of that story is, is if you don't understand something that your doctor tells you, ask. Ask a million questions. If you get news like that, be like, in my head, I'm thinking, whoa, what do you mean I don't have enough time? Like, does that, like, I don't have enough time to live. What do you mean? Like, what, what are you talking about? 
but I didn't say anything because I was just like, okay, I just like accepting it. Like, yep, this is worst case scenario. This is horrible, blah, blah, blah. So if you don't understand something or something is confusing to you that your doctor is telling you, ask. Just ask. Ask a million questions. Be annoying as possible because it's your life. It's your body and you need to understand what's going on. So ask a million questions. I wish I had. But so anyway, after we got that all squared away and I actually went in and started my treatments, the very first thing that they did was they had to fit me for my mask. Now, if you're someone with brain cancer and you're looking it up, you may have seen these radiation masks. I have mine right here. This is my mask. It's got my nice little nose hole in it and it's formed to my face. I don't know if you can really see that. Um, so the first thing that they did was they had to bring me in and make this. And so they basically pull this out piece of plastic out and you're you know you're laying on kind of a like an MRI table and um, the the nurse is like okay this is gonna be wet and I'm thinking all right they're about to waterboard me here you know like this is gonna be horrible it was barely damp so if they tell you that it's gonna be wet it's really not that wet but it is I mean it is uncomfortable they pull it down over your face because they're forming it to you and um, as it hardened I noticed that it felt even tighter, so it may feel a little bit tighter when you actually get into your radiation treatments because it is then hardened because it's soft and obviously pliable when they're putting it on you initially. Um, one thing that I do want to do is, you know, they gave me my mask at the end. They asked if I wanted it, and I'm like, heck yeah, I want it. Um, and I'm trying to decide what to do with it now. So if anybody has any suggestions on what I can do to my mask, I was kind of thinking about turning it into like a Chia Pet situation, but I have whatever the opposite of a green thumb is, so I'm not very good at keeping plants alive. <laughs> um, so if you have any suggestions on what I should do with my mask, let me know, because I really want to make something out of it. Um, so the machine that you go into when you're going into radiation from the images in the little pamphlets and stuff, I thought it was really going to be like an MRI machine where you're inside the tube and, you know, and it's like really claustrophobic and loud. It's not like that at all. Um, the one that I was on, it's basically a very flat table. But for me, they gave me, you know, the little thing that goes under your knees and, and um, I don't know about everywhere, but at the Mayo Clinic, they have warm blankets everywhere and they always ask if you want a warm blanket and I'm like heck yeah because it is so comforting and just when you're laying out on that table I don't know it just makes you feel more human I guess to have that nice warm comforting blanket on you but so it's just this flat table and you you obviously lay down on it and they've got your specific thing that's holding your head in place you know, it's like a little neck comforting thing. So you get in and you find your find your spot. And, and then they come in, the nurses come in and they strap the mask over your face. So that way your head cannot move. And whenever I would get in there, um, they would tell you, me, you know, wiggle around and find your spot in your mask. So I'm wiggling around, you know, and I'm finding my spot and because my mask had tightened some, and I've seen this on a lot of other brain cancer people's social medias, you get the little dots in your forehead from, from the mask. I mean, these are pushing into your skin a little bit. And so I joked that when I came out, I, I looked like a golf ball because my whole forehead was just covered in dots, you know, and, and little indents. But it really wasn't, it's really not uncomfortable. It's just... Um, it's just a little bit tighter, so it leaves little marks on your head. Um, I would... What The biggest thing when you're receiving radiation that they tell you is just to not move. So they tell you don't fall asleep because you're probably going to move in your sleep. So I was like panicking, just like don't fall asleep, don't fall asleep, don't move. You know, just like trying my hardest not to. 
and I did a good job. And honestly, after every treatment in the beginning, I would get out and I'd say, did I move? And they're like, no, you did great. And so they kind of, you know, got to know me and know that I, that I worry about things like that. And so they would tell me, you know, you did great today. You didn't move today. You know, good job. And, um, so it's, it's really not as scary as I thought it was going to be. It's not claustrophobic, really. Um, it's got a big thing, the actual radiation thing that then moves around you to treat wherever you need to be treated. Um, for me, the first couple times that I did the treatment, it felt warm where they were treating it. And I, at first I thought it was, that was in my head. But when I got out, I asked, I said, what part of my head were you treating today? And he pointed out where it was. And that was exactly where it felt warm. And so I knew it was something I was actually feeling. And it kind of felt like if you go outside and you put your face to the sun and you can just feel your skin get warm, that's kind of what it felt like. So it wasn't painful. It wasn't unpleasant. It just... I was like, wow, I can feel that. Am I always going to feel that? The, the, the nurse in the radiation room told me, he's like, you know, that's really, really rare for people to be able to feel anything at all during radiation treatment. He said, but it does happen to some people. Well, for me, it only lasted a few days, like the first three days or so. And then randomly one day throughout, you know, throughout the treatment, I would feel it. And then I wouldn't feel it for... A week and then I would feel it again and but it was never really horrible so if you do feel a little bit of warmth that happened to me too so I mean and it was fine nothing ever happened um the biggest annoyance for me with the radiation treatment as far as side effects go you know obviously during this time I was also doing chemotherapy so I was experiencing a lot of side effects that I don't really know what was the chemo what was the radiation but the things that I know were the radiation for sure, when you're receiving radiation on your head, it causes hair loss. Now, I think that I'm lucky in my brain cancer sense that traditional chemotherapy doesn't pass through the blood-brain barrier. And, um, and so you can't get it. So you take a different type of chemotherapy, which doesn't make you lose your hair. Well, the radiation wherever you're receiving treatment makes you lose your hair. So I don't know if you noticed in the last video when I had my hair up that it kind of looks like I did the little side shave thing, you know. I didn't. That's from radiation treatment. <laughs> um, this is, I've been home now for about three months from my radiation and now my hair is just finally starting to grow back in that area. It's about that long, not very. But I received treatment, my treatment was basically around the entirety of my head. So it's on both sides and in the back. But I feel like uh, I ended up being kind of lucky that that's sort of a style right now. So when I wear my hair up, I've had multiple people actually ask me, Oh, you did the side shave thing? And I'm like, sure. <laughs> and then I have to kind of explain to them, like, no, radiation causes hair loss wherever it's being treated and, and blah, 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 blah. But yeah, so know that uh, you're if you're receiving treatment, you're going to lose your hair wherever the treatment's being done. And, you know, and I mean, it was basically completely bald here during and, and immediately after. Like I said, this has been three months of regrowth and I'm just, I'm barely stubbly here, you know. So... You are probably going to lose some hair and you're probably going to, you know, be, have bald spots. But if it's something you're uncomfortable with, get a wig, um, get a head wrap. You know, uh, there's so many options out there. Um, just look them up and, you know, there's tons and tons of resources and options for people when you're losing your hair from treatment. Same thing with if you're getting traditional chemotherapy and it makes you entirely lose your hair. You know, there are a lot of options out there for you. So, you know, look into them and use them. Um, one thing also when doing, when losing the hair, the other thing that I noticed is I had a ton of scalp dryness and it was itchy and it kind of burned a bit. 
And um, so, you know, I asked my doctors what I should do about that. And they suggested, um, for me, they suggested Vanna cream. And they're like, let me get you a sample of, of what we suggest people go and buy. And so she comes out with this tub of cream that was seriously like this big. And I'm like, that's your sample size? I'll take multiple samples, please. Which they didn't do, but that tub was enough to last me. I mean, I still have it, you know, so, and my scalp has gotten a ton, a lot better, but I still do. Now that my hair is regrowing, I still do go through every morning after I shower, I take some of the Vanna cream and I just run it through where I know that the, you know, the hair is regrowing and the scalp is irritated. So there was some scalp dryness and some scalp irritation that you'll probably experience as well. Um, because I've, talk to other people now who've experienced the same thing and yes they did experience that um, I'm not really sure how much of a problem that is on other parts of the body with radiation but it is possible again I'm not a doctor and I don't know I'm just this is my experience um, one thing that I also want to point out is that if you're being treated by multiple different departments so like for me there was my radiation team and then there was my oncology team and then there was my psychology team because i'm an anxious freak and i was really struggling who wouldn't though um <laughs> one thing that i want to point out is that your radiologist is probably going to become your go-to person at least they kind of were for me because they are the people that you see every day when you're receiving treatment, you may not see your oncologist every day or even once a week, depending on your situation and where you are. But if you're in the middle of radiation treatment and you're going in like me five days a week, Monday through Friday to get radiation done, they are going to be the people you see every day. Those nurses are the people you see every day. And so they are just as well trained as a just oncologist in cancer specific things so if you have any questions even not regarding your radiation ask them because if they can't answer it they can get you to the person who can answer it you know you have to advocate for yourself I'll say that time and time again you have to advocate for yourself ask a million questions talk to your radiologist talk to the nurses talk to the secretary at the front desk where you check in every day for it I mean they're really the people who see you every day and they're going to get to know you. I don't know if it's this way at every clinic, but at the Mayo Clinic, it got to the point where they all knew my name. I mean, you're there. I did six weeks and it was, like I said, Monday through Friday for six weeks straight. And I, they, I mean, they, they got to know my name. They were super friendly. I don't remember any of their names because I'm horrible with names and I was also going through a lot at the moment so I couldn't remember all of their names but they uh, they they were super cool and yeah um, so something that has become pretty common that I've noticed and you can look this up on YouTube look up ringing of the radiation bell or ringing radiation bell something along those lines and you'll find lots of videos it seems like most places around the country now um, have a bell in their radiation waiting area that on your last day of treatment when you finish your treatment you get to ring the bell it's the bell of hope that you know you finished your treatment um, and so as I'm sitting in the waiting room every day, I mean, I didn't see someone ring the bell every day, but most days I saw someone ringing the bell. And let me tell you, my mom and I, as we're sitting there, every time someone would ring the bell, we would start bawling. It was just such a lovely moment and you could tell that it meant so much to these people. And so, I mean, we were just crying the whole time. Um, but some people were really kind of meek about it. They would just kind of walk by and ding and then run out the door, you know, kind of embarrassed. And I was like, nope, when it's my turn, I am going to ring that bell. And so, um, my very last day I had my mom and also one of the uh, secretaries agreed to videotape it for me. 
And uh, I, I went up there and I rang the bell and I rang it hard and I, you know, I threw my hands up and woohooed and, and everybody in the, in the waiting room, of course, were all clapping and cheering with me. And it was just a really exciting moment to, to be done, even though the, the experience went as well for me as it possibly could and the people were amazing. They just, to be done with that was so wonderful because that also meant for me that I got to go home. And so that was huge for me. <laughs> you know, just the excitement of being done with this portion of this hardship. I don't even know what to call it. And yeah, but like I've said a million times, all of the nurses and everyone in the radiation department at the Mayo Clinic were as wonderful as they could be. And on my last day, I, I went around and I thanked everyone who was there. But they weren't, obviously, you know, some people weren't working that day. So I couldn't thank everyone. So I just want to say at the end of the video, if by some weird chance any of you are watching, thank you. You were so kind and so friendly and you made me feel so comfortable every day when I was in the midst of this horrible thing. And so thank you for what you do from the secretary to the nurses to the doctors. Thank you to everyone for what you do. And don't let anybody bring you down. Know that what you're doing is so important and that we really do appreciate you. So... All right, that's all for today. I got to go ahead in and get some treatment done. So I'll talk to you guys later.